Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Satan's leader busted, bend the knee to DEI, paying for perversion, and the worst dentist ever. <laughs> Welcome to Sigma Tiger News, and you're here with the big Sig Tig, and we are uh, encroaching on 100 subscribers. Go ahead, like, and subscribe if you are witnessing what's happening here, and we got some hot takes for you today. What's going on in the world of the news? Leader of Colombian gang, the Satans, that shot up butcher shop during reign of terror across the city of Bogota, is arrested in Texas. Venezuelan fugitive was seeking asylum in the U.S. Aderbis Purella of Venezuela was captured in New Braunfels, Texas on Tuesday. The leader of the notorious street gang that has been terrorizing business owners and residents in Colombia's capital uh, was arrested earlier this week in Texas, where he was seeking asylum. Venezuelan national Aderbis Perella was taken into custody by federal and local agents in New Branfels outside San Antonio on Tuesday. Homeland Security's investigations confirmed Wednesday. Perella, according to Colombian authorities, is the second in command of Los Santanas and was one of the seven most wanted murderers in Bogota. Well, thank God they captured this psychopath. In addition, he is also facing drug trafficking and extortion charges. The arrest of Perilla, who's also known as Maracucho or Pedrito, comes less than a week after Los Santanas assassin shot dead a butcher shop owner and an employee in a Bogota. There's an image of the individual, with his uh, ample gut hanging out over his waistband. Well-fed criminal by the look of it. There's an image of him uh, shooting somebody, it looks like. Uh, Bogota Metropolitan Police Commander General Jose Galdron revealed that one of the gang members with the whom Perella was in constant contact with is John Uscaduege, who oversaw the gang's hired assassins. Uscaduege was arrested Tuesday and allegedly had a role in the March 7 butcher shop attack, according to Colombia's Attorney Generals. So obviously these guys are going to get let out uh, on... Uh, no bail. Um, we'll see them on the streets before the end of today. Burglars steal $30 million in cash from Los Angeles Money Story Facility. Authorities say thieves stole as much as $30 million in a burglary. The thieves stole as much as $30 million in Easter Sunday burglary at Los Angeles Money Storage Facility in one of the largest cash heists in city history, police said Wednesday. The burglary occurred Sunday night at an unnamed facility in the Salomar area of San Fernando Valley where cash from businesses across the region is handled and stored. L.A. Police Department Commander Elaine Morales told the L.A. Times. The burglars were able to breach the building as well as the safe where the money was stored. The operators of the business, whom police did not identify, did not discover the massive theft until they opened the vault on Monday. Time said the break-in was among the largest cash burglaries in L.A. history, and the total surpassed any armored car heist in the city as well. The theft comes nearly two years after as much as $100 million in jewels and other values were stolen from a Brinks big rig at a Southern California truck stop. The thieves haven't been caught. Well, keep your eye out for that. Unbelievable. DOJ sues Utah for discrimination based on gender dysphoria of transgender prisoner. Hang on. Let's see what's happening here. The DOJ is suing the state of Utah, including the Utah Department of Corrections, for allegedly discriminating against a transgender inmate who removed his own testicles after suffering from gender dysphoria, which is a mental illness where you're uh, not satisfied with what you have. In Monday's announcement, uh, the DOJ claims the state violated America's and with Disabilities Act, ADA, by discriminating against the inmate on the basis of the individual's gender dysphoria, by denying her equal access to health care services and failing to reasonably modify policies, practices, and procedures where necessary to avoid discrimination. The transgender inmate was unnamed in the court documents. So the DOJ says, uh, listen, this guy came to you, this person came to you and said, hey, listen, I am not a man, I'm a woman, and I need gender-affirming care. And the Utah uh, corrections were like, uh, no. We don't have any reason to give that to you. It's not part of any sort of medical health reason at all. You get food, you get water, you have air, and you can get exercise. You're a prisoner. You don't have any extra privileges to make you feel good. Like, 
you know, like uh, I identify as an overweight person or like an indulger and like I only eat ice cream and lobsters. So can I please have some of that? And will the DOG, DOJ come and be like, yeah, listen, you guys are discriminating against this guy. Like, can't you see he only eats lobsters and ice cream and then has massive diarrhea all day? People with gender dysphoria, including those held in jails and prisons, are protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act and are entitled to equal access to medical care just like anyone else with a disability. Up to, but not beyond, what is necessary. Okay? Delays or refusals to provide medical treatment for people with gender dysphoria can cause irreparable harm, including debilitating distress, dep dep depression, attempts at self-treatment, and even death by suicide. The Civil Rights Division is committed to protecting the rights of all people with disabilities in our country, including those who experience gender dysphoria, and those rights are not given up at the jailhouse door. Yes, they are. 100%. You know, like, the jail isn't there to make sure that you're mentally fit. That's what a, like, maybe he should have been in a psych ward. Okay? Not a jail. Sounds like it, to me. DOJ claims the UDOC has also imposed unnecessary eligibility criteria for evaluation and treatment for gender dysphoria for incarcerated persons at the UDOC that it does not require for other health conditions. Well, the filing also says the UDOC denied all the inmates' requests, including modifying PAT searches, providing female makeup, clothing, or other items in the comm commissary to match the prisoner's gender identity. Additionally, the UOC did not individually assess her housing request to be transferred to a women's prison and denied requests for a male-to-female hormone prescriptions. Fine lines here, people. Like, when's it going to turn into some other? Like, what if I have dysphoria and I don't like being small? Are they going to give me testosterone and steroids and uh, some heavy iron to clang and bang? Until and unless another federal circuit finds correctly that a plain reading of the ADA excludes gender identity disorders and gender dysphoria states and their affiliated Department of Corrections will find themselves at losing end of demands for gender-affirming care on the taxpayer dime, she said. Absolutely. Last month, the DOJ's investigation of the state's penitentiary found officials had unnecessarily delayed the transgender inmates' request. While the UDOC does not comment on pending litigation, Corrections Executive Director Brian Redd said last month that the state was blindsided by the DOJ's investigation's findings and said we fundamentally disagree with the DOJ on key issues and are disappointed with their approach. Absolutely. Get out of here, DOJ. UCLA Med School forced first-year students to attend Structural Racism course where screaming pro-Hamas speaker told them to kneel for bizarre woke prayer Why? while pediatrician DEI boss looked on. What the heck? Thank goodness we're not in California. Uh, UCLA medical students were forced to sit through a bizarre lecture by a pro-Hamas activist who made them pray to Mama Earth while a faculty member sought to identify one student who refused to participate. Lisa Gray Garcia gave the two-hour presentation at Geffen Hall on the university's downtown campus March 27th. The lecture was a mandatory part of the Structural Racism and Health Equity class that all future doctors must take, administered by pediatrician Lindsay Wells. Are you kidding me? Mandatory for all doctors to take Structural Racism and Health Equity classes. Okay, Gray Garcia calls herself a poverty scola, keeps her face covered with a uh, kefye, except in a few interviews, and called Hamas October 7th attacks justified. Okay, so this person is uh, completely biased. Students were instructed to touch the floor with their fist while she made a non-secular prayer to Mama Earth and our ancestors, a complaint stated. Mama Earth was never meant to be bought, sold, pimped, or played, Gray Garcia said during the prayer, part of which was recorded by a student and given to the Washington Free Beacon. And here's an image of the individual who's clearly uh, looks disheveled, Looks like she's wearing prison jumpsuit. Anyway, she claimed private property was uh, a capitalist lie that killed black, brown, and houseless people who were forced to live on the streets. Gray Garcia, who grew up homeless with her single mother from the age of 11, railed against anti-homeless campaigns during another part of the lecture she posted online. Not only are bodies considered unclean in public, not only are outlaws criminalized, for being outside without access to a roof, but poly tricksters use us for their campaigns. 30 million was spent on removal of our household houseless bodies for turning a human being into trash. Like what rhetoric and buzzwords is this person getting on with? Like just utter trash. Greg Garcia's lecture was titled Housing, Injustice in LA, Addressing Unhousing and Practicing Solidarity, but also veered into the crisis in Gaza. Free, free Palestine. She chanted, uh, yeah, so, like, I would have literally have walked out. Here's the pediatrician there, uh, 
who was uh, leading it. And here's the missus with her cafe on her face in her uh, military garb. It's unclear how much Gray was paid for the lecture. They charged medical students around 44000 a year with additional costs, taking the total needed to train there, 84000 a year. Wow. Okay, so they probably paid her a couple of G-notes for her to get up and just talk a bunch of trash in your face. And all they're just like, listen, I just want to be a doctor, okay? I want to get paid big bucks, pay off the student loan, and I want to help people because, uh, you know, there it is. Vegas woman who once claimed to be middle-aged man executed worker at random. Okay, here we go, another one. A Las Vegas woman who previously claimed to be a 52-year-old man allegedly executed a worker sitting in his van in a random killing. Kayla Avery, Allery, 27, who has been out on parole since December following an arson conviction, locked up to a 41-year-old carpet cleaner, Raul Cardoza, and shot him in the neck while he and his brother were taking a break on March 26th. Cops found a 44 caliber handgun in her waistband and a bag containing purported methamphetamine. Uh, it was not clear if Allery was high on methamphetamine at the time of the shooting, but witnesses said it appeared to have been a completely unprovoked attack. There she is there with a scowling look upon her face. Allery's troubles uh, with law predate last month's random shooting. September 22, they received reports of a woman attempting to set a vehicle on fire in an apartment building. Got arrived, they found a crowd gathered around Allery who were laying on the ground in the parking lot. Yeah, so this person's a psychopath. Don't put her in jail. Put her in a psych ward. Lock her up. Straight jacket. Let's bring it back. Bring back the asylums, people. Because uh, we're allowing and affirming people who are crazy. The DSM states that gender dysphoria is a mental illness. It's not something to be affirmed, okay? Like uh, pedophilia. Okay, it's not something to be affirmed, okay? It's not. It's leading down a very winding, slippery road. Gigantic ocean, triple the volume of all Earth's surfaces, has just been found. The underworld ocean. The scientists from Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, have discovered a reservoir of water that is three times the size of all Earth's oceans. Deep beneath the planet's surface, this underground water supply rests some 700 kilometers beneath our feet. Uh, the farthest we've gone down is about 30 kilometers or 30,000 meters. Um, Russia did it. China's doing a borehole now. So they're stating a quest to find the origins of Earth's water led researchers to massive find a colossal ocean ensconced within the Earth's mantle over 700 kilometers below the surface. The hidden ocean concealed within a blue rock known as Ringwoodite dares our understanding of where Earth's water came from. The size of this subterranean sea is triple the volume of all planet's surface oceans combined. The new discovery not only enthralls with its scale, but also proposes a new theory about Earth's water cycle. It recommends that instead of arriving by comet impacts, as some theories have posited, Earth's oceans may have slowly seeped out from its very core. Stephen Jacobson, a researcher at Northwestern University in Illinois and the lead author of the study, informs this is substantial evidence that water on Earth came from within. To uncover this underground ocean, researchers used an array of 2,000 seismographs across the United States, analyzing seismic waves from over 500 earthquakes, waves which travel through Earth's inner layers, including its core, slow down when passing through wet rock, allowing scientists to assume the presence of this vast water deposit. Unproven and assumed. Forensics under fire. And I wonder, was it, is it salt water or fresh water? That's a big question. Does it become salty as it comes up through? Anyway, forensics under fire, murder trial of rancher George Allen Kelly. So we covered this before. Uh, rancher, you know, has migrants crossing his property uh, with guns often so he got himself a gun himself and would patrol on his horse using his gun he wakes up one morning one day he's having breakfast with his wife and they hear gunshots he's like what's going on so he goes out on his horse or no he actually went out on his patio and i think he's seen some people so far away and he shot some bullets just above them so he states and then later on that day he went and did his patrol and uh he found a db a dead body lying there and so he calls up the uh the border patrol and it's like hey i found something and they're like oh geez look at this it's a dead body and they, so they promptly arrest him and all the forensics comes out and says there's no bullet <clears throat> we don't know uh if it came from his gun uh so it's open to interpretation the prosecution had to defend the pathologist reports against a variety of other possibility posed by the defense Pathologist Dr. Krista Tim reviewed pictures of how the bullet that killed Gabriel Botema traveled up from his right side through his ribs, lung, and aorta before exiting his chest. So it seems like either he was uh, shot while on the ground, bending over perhaps, uh, or maybe uh, he was on the ground, or the person was on the ground shooting up. 
She told prosecutor Mike Jett the wound was consistent with a long rifle, which is what Kelly is accused of using. His defense had stricken that from the record. Uh, they also stated uh, a forensics expert came in and said, oh, yeah, it could have been a powerful handgun as well. Gunshot residue also played a role in the trial because its absence suggests a shot from far away, but the defense questioned that it could have been rubbed off before testing uh, with the samples. Yeah, so basically they're stating that this guy probably didn't do it. Prosecution saying he 100% did it. He shot him with a rifle because he's a psychopath. Whatever. No bullet. How can you prove it came from him? Bill Gates' money behind perverse curriculum teaching math instruction is white supremacy. I think it's sick that they're doing this to little kids. Parents defending education. Nicole Neely said... All right, let's dive in. Billionaire Bill Gates has invested billions of dollars in education over the years, notably bolstering far-left ideas, including assertions that mathematics instructions is white supremacy, and children are born sexual. Okay, and we know for a fact that Bill Gates was good buddies with Bill uh, with uh, Jeffrey Epstein, even though he says it was only one dinner. There's multiple occasions of him being uh, meeting with Jeffrey Epstein, and his wife left him. Okay, if your wife leaves you for being friends with a guy, it's probably because the guy that you're friends with is a scumbag and he's gotten you to do some crazy stuff. So, you know, speculating, I would say that uh, Bill Gates, you know, he likes uh, maps. He's a map. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation funded a curriculum called A Pathway to Equitable Math Instruction, which is run by the Education Trust West. The organization listed Gates Foundation under its acknowledgement section for the curriculum on the website, stating, We also wish to thank Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for their generous financial support of this project. The curriculum from the Education Trust West, titled Dismantling Racism in Mathematics Instruction. Of course, because numbers are racist. Colonialism in math is not easy for... Uh, people of uh, low income to learn so it's obviously a white problem exercises for educators to reflect on their own biases to transform their instructional practices like what is going on here are you kidding me i heard about this stuff in ontario trying to make math uh racial it's insane like this is people with way too much time on their hands and this is what happens when humans don't have to uh focus on survival they get to focus on their mentality and come up with wild ideas just like greek mythology they believed all that stuff the greeks believed that you had to pray to these wild gods and all this kind of stuff were they on mushrooms like what's going on over there we're not on mushrooms over here we're totally normal are we or are we all on ssris parents defending education's uh, Nicole Neely told Fox News that the funding the math equity program is perverse, especially given the success he derived from proficiency in the subject. It's awful. I mean, the part where it says showing your answer in math class is white supremacy culture. I have to take a step back and think the people who are teaching this, is that what they're teaching their own children? I have to think not. About 40% of Gates's K-12 education budget goes into math. According to Education Week in 2022, the Gates Foundation announced over $1 billion in funds for math education. According to Gates Foundation website, it provided 500,000 in November 2022 for a curriculum developed at Yale University called Ruler, with lessons probing into students' emotions, personal relationship, traumas, beliefs, and psychological triggers. This stated purpose was of the grant was to support the growth of Ruler in the 2021 school year. One section of the curriculum focused on teaching students to recognize societal norms and rules and how those can be defied, making sure to explain that even though we call these pattern rules, we do not need to follow them. Employ strategies to nudge your students towards feeling red when you are preparing to discuss topics such as injustice. Why are you talking about injustice in math? To shift your students into the red, consider showing them controversial photographs or news headlines. Consider prompting them with a thought-provoking topic where they are required to choose a side. Enraged, worried, anxious, annoyed. Red. Ecstatic, elated, cheerful, joy. Yellow. Content, calm, peaceful, serene, green. Bored, disappointed, hopeless, depressed. This is the the quadra uh, graph here. Anyway, I can't believe this. Sex Education's toolkit was released in 2020 and showed an insight into how the NGO teaches sex education. It said sex educators should have an understanding of young people as sexual beings. There you have it, people. Bill Gates is funding this stuff in your schools. And Bill Gates is fans with Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein used to use underage girls to honeypot people. Jeffrey Epstein likely honey potted this guy jeffrey epstein is now dead this guy is pushing white supremacy and dei and and all kinds of other things you know 
Sexual activity may be part of different types of relationships, including dating, marriage, and commercial sex work, among others. He said about sex education, children under 10 should be taught. Children under 10 should be told, as you grow up, you might start to be interested in people with diverse gender identities, Toolkit said. All right, that's enough. Propaganda, all up in the gaff. What else is going on? Here we have a couple of indigenous uh, fishermen from Canada left to walk shoeless after officers seized their boots. The two First Nation fishermen have said they were forced to walk shoeless for hours in the dark and cold after Canadian federal officers seized their boots. Uh, Justin has come out and said uh, it's uh, disturbing, absolutely, and troubling. Uh, so it's all about glass eels, okay? This is something that the Asians, Japanese, and Chinese love. It's like $5,000 a kilogram last year for like these uh, see-through little fish. And uh, there's major disputes about indigenous rights to uh, fish these. So they were out there fishing, and they weren't supposed to. Well, fishery and wildlife officers show up, and they're like, okay, standard procedure, give us your waders, your hip waders, which their boots were attacked to, and your cell phones. So they're like, yeah, well, we're, we're just... You know, like, we're fishing because we're indigenous. We're allowed to do this. And they're like, no, nope. no, sir. So uh, they went ahead and took their stuff, left them at a gas station, told them to walk home. And the guys were like, this is cruel and unusual. What are you doing? And they're like, that's your problem. I told the officer, man, this is outrageous. You're leaving me with no shoes? He said, you know the consequences. But I said, I know the consequences, but this is, like, outrageous on human rights. And he was like, yeah, sounds like your guys' problem. The men were told to leave the gas station, so they walked along the road in search of a motel, their feet wrapped in duct tape and plastic bags. When we were walking, there's times like, I'm man. I'm like, man, if we stop, we're going to die because our feet were just soaked. They stopped an ambulance, wouldn't pick them up, uh, allowed them to use the phone. So yeah, it's appalling, it's inhumane. We need a complete investigation to find out what happened. They could have cut the dude's boots off and said, here you go, buddy. Like, what's wrong with these humans? Tuberculosis cases reported in Chicago's immigrant shelters. Yeah, we talked about measles. was now TB. Uh, look out. It's an infectious disease caused by a bacteria that generally attacks the lungs and in some cases other body parts. Symptoms can include chest pain, fatigue, chills, coughing up blood. If not treated, TB can be fatal. According to the spokesman, there's no cause for concern at this time because the disease has been contained and the affected illegal immigrants are being treated. We will continue to offer treatment to individuals as necessary and take proper precautions to eliminate spread, but we do not consider this a matter presenting a substantial threat to the public. Not like uh, how they're perpetrating this bird flu that went from a bird to cow and to a human. Keep you posted on all of that. So TB is curable with antibiotics and it's not particularly infectious, requiring several hours or more prolonged close contact between individuals to spread. And so it's just another thing. The asylum seekers, the illegal immigrants, the undocumented, whatever you want to call them, uh, they're bringing across disease because they live in third world country and they don't have uh, mandates for vaccination and things like that. And of course, they don't have vaccination records or cards coming through. They're coming through infected and they're spreading it around and they're demanding housing and better food and everything, even though they're getting more money than our veterans. So let's look at the state of affairs. Maybe we should give up on America. Let's have a look at Philadelphia. This Philly cheesesteak all over the streets. haunting it's like the zombie apocalypse and these guys are going to wake up after being bitten by the fentanyl and just start tearing people apart Why aren't they helping these people? There you have it. Philadelphia has fallen. And the award for worst dentist in history goes to this guy in Alabama. Well, we had the worst doc. We had the... What was the other one? I can't remember. We were talking about these worst... The worst vet. That's what it was. And the worst doctor. Well, now we got the worst dentist. 
Uh, former Alabama dentist was sentenced to serve 180 years in prison for rape, sodomy, and sexual abuse inflicted on former employees and patients for, from his dental office. Deputy District Attorney of Etowa County, Carol Griffith, said 44-year-old Joseph Clarence Cox was found guilty by a jury in January. Griffith said Cox was arrested in April 2021 following an extensive investigation by Gadsden Police Department. At trial, evidence showed that there was a large employee turnover within his office between June 2020 and April 2021 due to Cox's inappropriate sexual contact with employees. Eight former employees testified to repeat incidents of sexual abuse by Cox that took place during normal business hours. Two of those employees told the jury that the incidences went beyond touching and included incidents of both forcible rape and sodomy. Three former patients also testified that Cox subjected them to sexual contact while he was performing their dental procedures. In January, the jury found Cox guilty of two counts of rape in the first degree, two counts of sodomy in the first degree, and eight counts of sexual abuse in the first degree following a week-long trial. If, you don't, if you're unaware of what sodomy is, it's penetration with uh, the penis into the anus or the oral cavity. Cox has previously pled guilty uh, to three counts of harassment in, in uh, DeKalbe, County in 2012, following similar allegations, those offenses resulted in a probation sentence, and Cox's dental license was suspended for a period of six months. At sentencing, Circuit Court Judge uh, George Day told Cox that he treated his place of business as his own personal playground, and that he showed no respect for any women who entered into his office. Cox was sentenced to 25 years imprisonment as to each count of rape in the first degree and sodomy in the first degree. He was ordered to serve 10 years in the state pen. As to each of the charges of sexual abuse in the first degree, Day ordered that the sentences be run consecutively with each other and that not concurrently, consecutively, one after the other for a total of 180 years in prison. So see you in hell, sir, from heaven, because that's where the tiger's going, upstairs. You're going downstairs. All right, guys. TGIF, thank God it's Friday. Thank God for subscribing, and uh, let's keep this community growing. If you have a story you want, Covered, just throw it down in the comments if you have something you don't like. Uh, if you want to know what I look like, go ahead, ask. Maybe I'll tell you. Who knows? Enjoy your weekend, people. Sigma Tiger, signing off.